from the message that Ted Sanquist gave. Okay, you remember? If, if you were here, this will hope, hopefully draw back a memory for you. Okay? It, it is the season for the wedge, but I think that as a people, um, God knows who we are and he knows how to talk to us. And that being said, he understands that we are called to be a useful people for his kingdom and for his purposes. Now we have, through the year, we've, we've talked quite a bit about what the Lord is putting on our plate for this year. Uh, we've had a, a short video that we've run that showed um, the spirit of the Lord and the life of the Lord coming to us, the people of God, that we not consider ourselves to be the people of God that are to be in a box with a mentality that is boxed in by our own thinking or what we have seen and heard in the past, but we are to be a people that love, that lead, that liberate, and that launch. Obviously, all of those things being done, not in our power, but through the power of God. And so as Ted spoke about us being like a wedge, each of us could individually understand the points and the, the matter that is in the wedge, whether that be character or some of the other things that he, he talked about. But the reality is that God is the power that comes forth and into and through us that allows us to do these very things that he called us to do from the beginning, to love, to lead, to liberate, and to launch. And so this morning we are going to reconnect with those words so that we don't lose the theme and the vision that the Lord has, has given us to continue to walk out throughout this year. If you will, please turn with me in 2 Samuel. We're going to chapter 23. If you've ever prepared a message, if you've ever asked the Lord to give you words for someone, you can probably relate to where I've been this week, and it's been in a place where I've been wanting to hear and understand and receive what the Lord was saying through the words that he put on my heart, and I don't know, um, sometimes they come very quickly, and other times they, they don't come very quickly, and so I have to just continue to seek and ask and, and wait. But the, the story that we're going to read this morning and the understanding that comes through it, I hope can come through in the words that I speak this morning. You see, this is a story of men. But women, I don't want you to be, you know, focused on that, okay? These are, these are men. These are, the story speaks of very manly men. We could get overwhelmed with a lot of different thoughts in that regard. But I want you to know, ladies, that you are called by God. You are called his daughters. And you have purpose. You have life. You have plans. You have destiny in the Lord Jesus. And so though we're reading about mighty men this morning, I don't want you to be turned off to think, well, that's who God's going to use. He wants to use all of us as his children. So we're going to read this, and let's start in verse 8 of chapter 23. Forgive me if you are a name scholar and I mispronounce these. I will try my best. I actually love reading the names in the Bible because I have so much fun doing that. But anyhow... These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Josheph, Josheb, Bas 
Shabbat, the Tachmanite, chief among the captains. He was called Adino, the Esnite, because he had killed 800 men at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated. He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to plunder. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herorite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. But he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Then three of the thirty chief men went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam. And the troop of Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. I'm going to stop right there for a moment. I know in our day and age, when we hear things of this nature, that these men killed 800 people, that they stood their ground and they battled fiercely, and it was a gruesome probably thought in your mind as you heard me reading about these mighty men. However, I want us to realize that this was the people of God, and they were coming up against evil in the territorial battles that they were in, in the, the evil that would present itself against David and his men. And God was using them to bring forth his will. I know in this time again, you know, we think, wow, killing, is that what we should have, what they should have done? And I can only say at this time and in this place, this is what the Lord was giving them to do. And they were doing it well, obviously, from what we can understand. Now, getting beyond that, I want us to understand that these men, these mighty men of David, were not alone. They were leading. Now, there were a few that, that stood their ground alone, but they were together with others that were battling also, not only for, for David, but for the Lord. And I want us to understand that in that, there came a bond. There came, some would say, the bond of brotherhood. Okay, we've heard about that through war stories and, you know, the world wars that we've had ourselves. We've heard of things where men come together and are bonded together. That was happening with these men. There's a reason I say that. It's because the Lord is in the business of bonding us together, unifying us in the spirit through Jesus Christ. We are still, as these mighty men were called to do tremendous things, we are still today called to do tremendous things. Now, they may not look like standing in a field of lentils and killing hundreds. But it may mean standing in the face of something that is dangerous or a situation that we don't feel comfortable and speaking the name of Jesus and revealing what life is truly about. And so this morning, we're going to keep reading because I want you to understand what it means to be committed to one another in Christ and what he's doing. So we're going to pick up and, and continue to read through this portion in, in chapter 23. David was then in the stronghold, and again, the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Now, again, 
these men, we've just heard, they're tremendous fighters. They have ability that obviously only comes by God's grace and by God's will. That being said, this was another opportunity to prove how strong God was. This was another opportunity to prove their love and their brotherhood for David. He was saying, oh, that I could have a drink from this well. Obviously, again, a drink from his past. A drink from a well that he had drank from before and longed and liked and longed for it again. And so these men go in to the enemy's territory and they take what rightfully belongs to them. And they bring it back to David. That doesn't say that they snuck in in the darkness of night and they quietly tiptoed through. We've heard stories like that with David before, right? But this time, no. They went into the midst of the enemy camp to the garrison where all the weaponry would have been and where the men would have been on guard, ready to use the weapons that they had. They fought their way in. I can't only imagine what the Philistines were thinking when they got a drink of water and left. You know, like, that's what you came for? Wow, okay. So these men make their way back to David. And what does David say? What does he do? He takes that, that cup of water, or the cistern, whatever they were bringing it to him in, and he looks at that. And the realization comes to him what that meant. This is, this is basically your blood. You men have risked your life. I can't drink this. The value of what this is goes beyond my desire to drink it. Even though it says, David, oh, I long, long for a drink. Of that water. I can remember the taste. I can, I can just, I understand how good that will feel in my mouth and running down my throat. But when the time comes, he comes to the realization of what that represents. And he pours the water out. Pours it out to understanding. That this is a meaningful, meaningful drink. And so this morning as we come to a realization that God desires us to be not only brothers and sisters in Christ, but to be willing to go forth with the gifts that we have for one another. To use the gifts that God has given us. I want us to just understand, because I'm not sure personally, well, first of all, I'm a little caught off right there, okay? So just, that's obvious. Um, but here's the thing. These men were not just supermen naturally. It, it wasn't as if they had a natural superiority in their flesh. It was only because of the Father working in them. None of us, though we are gifted naturally with some abilities and talents, none of us can do the will of God on our own. Do you agree? Okay? This, by itself, cannot break through a log. This cannot go through a piece of firewood by itself. The power of God must activate and flow through the wedge. The power of God was activating and flowing through the men of David. And that was what he understood. That their gifts were being used for his sake out of love. We are people 
called to do multiple things, but liberate is the word that the Lord continued to highlight for me as we came into this week and through the week. We are called to liberate those just as the Lord gave power to the mighty men. He will give us the ability to bring forth love, to lead others, to liberate those who are in persecution and and entrapped in sin and to allow that to launch out in reality where God is leading their lives. We are. And so the wedge is able to liberate We can liberate the logs of oppression. Now, I want us to to get another grasp of this because the Lord showed me a different tool that we can use. Okay? Now, I'm not going to start this puppy up, although the cloud of smoke would be brilliant and, and great. But what I want us to understand is that We are called to be used by God to bring down the enemy. Just as this is used to bring down trees, to bring them under the submission of God, to become useful. Sometimes trees are brought down because they aren't able to stand in the place that we need to move through. God wants to do that, and I want us to realize, though, yes, we can all, you know, all get excited about having, Abram didn't even want to go downstairs this morning because he thought we were going to fire up the chainsaw, okay, and that's exciting a lot of times, but the reality of a chainsaw is that it is only good if it has a sharp chain, okay, now, put this down. And this one does have a pretty sharp chain. I want us to to look and examine this chain. Okay? Those of you that are familiar with chainsaws, you've handled these. You know what the ins and outs of them are. But I want us to realize this morning that these chains are equipped with teeth. And what the Lord is showing me through David's mighty men and through who we are is that these teeth are in line with each other. They are sharp. They are useful. You see, this chain will cut very well as it goes through the tree. Only because the teeth are able to take one little bit, each one of them taking its bit and together being used to bring down that tree. Now, if you use a chainsaw often, or if you have, you can get a sense when some of your teeth are breaking off. It starts to, you can feel it in the chainsaw at times. You can feel when you're getting dull. There's a lot of work that goes into cutting wood with a dull chain. What I have been given for us to understand this morning is that this is a representation of who we are in Christ. We are connected. We are to be sharp. We are to be understanding that each of us has a part in the plan. And we're also to understand that if one of us backs down if we break off, if we become dull, it affects the whole group. It affects the saw and the ability. Okay? Now, I don't want us to, to jump on that one in the natural sense and say it's over then if we lose a tooth or if one becomes dull. No, it's not over. Remember, God is the power in which we have the ability. And so it's not over, but it does then lend 
to the other teeth on that chain to recognize. Wait a minute. Just had a casualty. Hold on a minute. We're getting dull here. In that moment, in that understanding, just as David's understanding came, in the understanding that God will bring us, we need then to minister to each other. Why would we do that? Well, it's very simple. We need each other. Very familiar passage. We're going to go there anyhow. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, and I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no one can say that the Lord Jesus except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. As we go further into that chapter, we understand that the church is the body of Christ, and we are not to look at our portion, our part, as the part. You know, as you watch football, if some of you do watch football, I know that, You hear these guys announcing, as a team, where they went to college, right? Or, or, I'm sorry, professional football, they announce where they've gone to college. What do the guys that go to OSU say, Aaron? Yeah, say it again louder. The Ohio State University, right? Separating that out. We are special. The Ohio State University. You see, that mentality was sewn into them somewhere, but that even that little bit separates out. God wants us to be the church, his body. Not to say we as one group of the body are the church, but to say we are the body of Christ. We have been given different gifts, and we are to use them for the glory of God in the larger portion. Just as David's mighty men were willing to use the gifts that they had been given by God to fight their way in to bring David a drink that he was longing for. Just as David had the revelation and wisdom to have that drink offering and pour it out and say, this is more than what I deserve. This is more than a drink of water. This is a representation of God using his people for a specific call. As we hear the call that the Lord gives us, the call to love people, to lead people, to liberate people, And then to launch and help people in discipleship to grow and to know the Lord Jesus. Each of us has a different place. Remember, we're linked up. Each of us has a purpose. Now sometimes that means that we have to look inwardly to each other. And it comes sometimes to work. 
right? If I recognize that one of the teeth just bit the dust, I mean, it's, it's in bad shape. Am I just going to keep pushing on saying, well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. Well, I'm cutting, I'm, I'm making a way here. Or are we going to say, wait a minute, we need to shut the chain saw down for a minute. We need to minister here so that we can be fully going together as a unit. There are times where that needs to happen. There are times where we need to recognize what the Lord's telling us to do. How many of us here, and, and we're going to get bold this morning, how many of us here understand the gift or gifts that God has given you in terms of a spiritual gift? This is not a show, okay? This is not to say, boy, I don't know, but I'm raising my hand, okay? If you know what your gift is and you're understanding it, then raise your hand just for a few seconds here, okay? Now, if you didn't put your hand up, that is not to say bad or any junk like that, okay? Because actually the people that put their hands up, they're going to get a, a, even a harder question next, okay? But here's the thing. There, I actually have back in the office, I have a spiritual gift survey. So if you've never taken a survey and, and asking the Lord, first of all, what are the gifts that you've given me to use? How can I, like a mighty man of God or a mighty woman of God, how can I be used by you, Father? How can I be a sharp part of the chain? And so if you need one of those, we have them in the office. I can run as many copies as you would need. There's also uh, surveys on the website, on the internet, I should say. Although some of them are not the best because they leave out parts of, of the, you know, like healing ministry and some of those things that to some people, uh, it's easier to leave those things out than to include them. However, I would say... If you can find one, you can go to lifeway.com. You can go to spiritualgifttest.com. And you can start to understand a little bit more of how is God wanting to use me? What has he sown into me? And how can I use those things? We need to be able to operate in the gifts of the Spirit as a body, to grow in that, to understand how to develop in our spirit. In our spiritual gifts, we need to be willing to not tear somebody down if, if they come up and say, hey, I believe I have a word that the Lord gave me, and it's for you, and here it is, and you're thinking, that was totally off. They, that, I don't know if that was from God, okay? And then ask the Lord. Lord, was that from you? Because I don't feel like that was from you. I've had times where someone has given me a word from the Lord, and I've said, wow, uh, they got some bad pizza. And then you know what happened? The Lord showed me how real he was. He showed me the reality and the truth. And what that person had said was right on. It's not comfortable sometimes, both to receive and to give. It's not comfortable to be used by God sometimes. When you're standing in the lentil field and everyone else runs away, and God doesn't tell you, run. He says, stand. And you have to battle and fight. It's not always easy and it's not always comfortable. But the Lord wants us, his people, to be willing to do these things and then to be useful in the church and in the community. Because the next question that I have for those of you that do know your spiritual gifting, should I make you raise your hands this time? I don't know, it's up to you, okay? How many of us have been active 
in using our spiritual gifts. Okay? And if so, are you active in here? If I asked around, what is so-and-so's spiritual gift, could anyone else tell me? This is not to put us down, believe me. This is about us growing and building in what the Lord wants us to be and do. If the answer is, I'm not sure if people would know what my gift is, then I'm going to have to say, and I'll use myself. I will say about myself, maybe I'm not using it well. Maybe I'm not stewarding what God has given me here in this body. This is a comfortable setting, isn't it? I I hope so. I hope that we are a people that love one another and want to see each other grow. And so if someone offers part of their gifting to you that you're not saying, "Ah," because it gets a little bit more difficult when we go out from this group. But the reality is we don't go out of ourselves. We go out with the Lord. But we need to be ready to use the gifts that the Lord gives us to train here. Then, and even in the process, to be ready to be used by God in the field. Again, God has brought us quite a message. A reminder of sorts. We are like a wedge. We are like this chainsaw. We are to be used for his kingdom. With his power to be useful. Now just in your life and in your relationships, are there people that you know that are struggling? Are there people that you know that, that have maybe tried really hard in life but seem to, to keep getting knocked down? Do you know someone in your family that doesn't know the Lord? Do you have friends or neighbors that are really nice, good people, but they, they're not in a relationship with Jesus? You see, God has given us what we need and continues to flow through us so that we can bring forth the love and the liberty in him. And through his spirit, we can be used. Well, we have a couple opportunities. So maybe you put your hand up and said, I know what my gift is. And maybe your hand didn't shoot up as quickly when the second question was asked. Maybe you don't know what your gift is. I encourage you, this is the time to be adamant about finding what the Lord wants to do with you and through you. We all know that Go Day is coming up. This is a practical application of what we're talking about, right? We are the body of Christ coming together. We often get enthralled into what we're doing to the point of going, wow, I've got this job and and I have to get these tools and I have to be ready to be there at this time and and when I get there, I'm going to really work hard. Can I say to us, that is not what Go Day is about. Okay? If that's the mentality that you've had for Go Day... I don't want to say that you're wrong, but there's a different call this year. The call is to recognize, as just as the mighty men that David had, to recognize that we are called the body of Christ. When we go and unite with other members, the first thing is we can't go in with an attitude to say, we've got something that you don't have, or that we're better in some degree. I don't think that we carry that mentality, but the enemy will try to slam us with that type of thought. The other thing that we need to go in and do is say, 
listen, this is not, this is about serving our community, but it's not about me just getting my hands dirty and doing the practical work. It is about that, but there's a bigger portion. That portion is to understand these are the gifts God has given me. Let me go first with that desire that I be used by God in that way. It could be in the midst of grabbing a pile of leaves that the Lord shows you something or says something. Here's the thing. We don't get so caught up in the work aspect that we don't go about doing the spiritual work that the Lord has. Okay? As a body, I believe that God has given us things that the rest of the members of the body of Christ in this area that will be gathering up, they need. And we need to also have that mentality that they have gifts that we need. And together, we can go forth. We can split the wood. We can chop down, cut down the tree. We can defeat the obstacles in the power of God. Last, the last thing that I will, will talk about this morning is another practical application of what we are doing as a body. This is an exciting application. We have a group right now of elders that consists of Lee Dewey, Phil Miller, and myself. The Lord has given us the direction to be a leadership team. Not that me, not that I would be some kind of, you know, single leader. That's not what the Lord is after in this place. And I hope that you already know that, okay? But um, as a team, we believe that the Lord wants us to be using our gifts laterally. That means no one on top and then another under, another under. That's a business structure that works well somewhere else. But here the Lord wants us to be as like a block wall where we are able to stand together, stand united in the gifts that we have, and be useful in that way to the Lord through prayer, through surrender, and through communion and communication. And so I say that all to say that we are at a place where we're ready to add in to that elder team. And so um, if you are a member here in Christ's Covenant, there will be a letter that's going to go out this week. There are two men that we are looking to put into that elder team. Those men are Eric Bacon and Isaiah Shipman. So there will be a letter coming out to explain what that is and the process that we go through to have those men put into place. This letter will also help you understand that if there's something of concern in your heart, if you've got something that's gone on maybe in your life with one of these men that you want to bring forth, we ask that it be a biblical you know, concern. But if there is anything, then you can respond. The letter will, will help you understand how that process works. But what I want us to be excited about, what I want us to be um, looking forward is that God has equipped us with men and women with different gifts, different abilities, but the same God, the same spirit. And he is the one that we look to for power, for instruction, for insight, for his will to be done that his love would flow through us in that process. So, again, I'm, I'm hoping that we can hear in the story of these mighty men and in the understanding of God's word that likens us to the body, that we are here for his purpose, gathered together, united in a purpose to go out and to link together inwardly also. We are blessed. Amen? Amen.
Let's stand up and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you that it is because of you surrendering that we are able to have relationship where we can abide with you and that you abide in us. So this morning, Father, as we stand and as we leave this place, I ask for um, a continuation of what is started in the ears of each person here to flow deeper into our hearts. Father, that we, whether we know, maybe we, we operate in the gifts that you've given us in your spirit, that we would continue to desire you, continue to be willing to put ourselves in a place where we are following after you as your people. Lord, you have to highlight these things for us. Most of the time, we're walking around, we're going through our day with schedules, and for time's sake, we, we are on the move. So, Father, we ask that you would help us to understand what you would have us do, and then give us the power to do it, the timing, all those things that we need. Father, I also lift up those that are here today that are saying, spiritual gifts I don't know. I don't know what mine are. I don't know what God has given me. I, I'm not sure he has given me any. Today, Lord, I ask that you would provoke in anyone that's saying that, provoke a desire to understand your giftings better, even, Lord, to take a step, practical step of searching out, how can I understand that more? Whether that be taking a survey or whether it be praying and saying, Lord, give me, please, this answer. Help me to understand. Maybe it's taking us even a step further and saying, Lord, I'm going to fast and I'm going to wait. And I'm going to wait on you to show me this. Maybe for others, it's to see and to hear from you. And then to report to, the, to a single person. This is what I believe the Lord told me to tell you about your spiritual gift. I don't know what you want to do, Lord. I just... I know that I'm hungry, and I believe that we are a hungry people that want your will to be done. And so, Lord, we ask that you would make us courageous. Help us as we gather together with the body of Christ to be men and women that are willing and wanting to stand together in unity, but also to be used for the building up of the body. And then, Lord, that as a witness of our love, your love, we can go forth and serve and that others can come to that place of knowing you and having a relationship. So, Lord, we have many things going on here. You already know that. We ask that you would move us, motivate us, and help us, Father, to remember to seek you first. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.